we get the question all the time. What do you do at Titan Medical Center? So we do hormone replacement therapy for males and females. We do nationwide blood testing. We do medical weight loss. We do vitamin amino acid injectable therapies. They're just niche to our clinics and patients. We also do rejuvenation therapies for skin, hair, nails, liver detox, okay? So we do a lot of different things. Everything that's gonna make you look better, feel better, and perform better, that's what Titan Medical Center does. So if you want more information about some different therapies that can help you out, give us a call at 727-389-3220. Visit us at TitanMedicalCenter.com. My name is Blake and I've been with Titan Medical for about a year now. So I was feeling just kind of sluggish, low energy and there were a bunch of goals that I really wanted to reach so I figured I needed to reach out to Titan get them to take care of me. So I had a few issues actually that I wanted to take care of. Um, number one was my water retention. and turns out this is actually due to a hormonal imbalance. So Titan Medical ran my blood work and we found out that I had low testosterone. So once I started my therapy with Titan, uh, the water weight just started, you know, dropping off so quickly. <laughs> Even as a woman, like low testosterone is a really big deal and can impact weight loss goals and everything like that. Okay, so my blood work said that uh, I did have low testosterone for a woman, um, and it also told me that I had a B12 deficiency. So I started in with my Titan Complete and my ECA stack and uh, the testosterone replacement therapy. So I've tried a lot of different things actually through Titan. Um, the ones I'm using right now are of course my TRT, my testosterone replacement therapy, that's essential. You know, if your hormones are out of balance, that's the number one thing that you need to take care of. Uh, another one I'm taking are the ECAs. It's my personal favorite. <laughs> Helps with uh, your energy levels and just burns fat, even if I'm not in a calorie deficit, if I'm not dieting, kind of just helps maintain my leanness year round and just helps with energy focus, all that good stuff. So that's one of my favorites. And then the third one that I'm taking is the hair, skin and nails capsules. So I recently took out my hair extensions and I've been wanting to, you know, grow out my hair, <laughs> work on that hair health. And I mean, my hair is finally growing again. It's grown probably an inch at least, maybe more. And I've only been starting the capsules for maybe a month now. So that's a newer one that I've added into my regimen. I feel so much better since starting my therapies with Titan, um, mostly due to the you know, hormone imbalance because if your hormones are out of whack, there's just nothing that can fix that. You feel sluggish. You know, you have no energy, and honestly, that's made the biggest difference for me, especially as an athlete, you know, because we need that energy. <laughs> Even if you're dieting, you know, my energy levels stay high. Um, and the ECA stack, I know I keep talking about the ECA stack, but, you know, I absolutely love that one. Keeps my energy levels high all day, and there's no crash, that's the best part. Normally when you take you know, a caffeine pill or, you know, even drinking coffee sometimes, energy drinks, pre-workout, that kind of thing. There's always a crash after. So, you know, you feel great for like an hour or two and then you just kind of 
<laughs> crash, get a headache, need a nap or whatever. And the ECA doesn't do that to me. It's like clean energy all day and it's much easier to get to the gym and get done what I need to get done. Uh, really, really good. So I absolutely love the customer service here at Titan. Um, probably my favorite thing is you can just text the number anytime that you have a problem or you need a refill or anything like that. They're really, really easy to get a hold of, care about their patients. Um, not a lot of companies really truly care about you know their patients, but Titan always has my back. 24 hours, you know, whatever I need, they're always there. So I absolutely love that. Um, and just everyone's really nice too. You feel like you're walking into like a big family and it's just a great feeling. So absolutely love the customer service here. There's nothing like it. <laughs> absolutely, I couldn't be more happy. Um, you know, they've helped me with all of my goals, finally losing weight again, <laughs> got that water retention off. I feel my best and it's amazing because now my body, you know, is reflecting how I feel on the inside too. So I look great and I feel great. Um, and it's just really, really amazing to like finally be hitting those goals. <laughs> so even if you're not an athlete and you know, maybe you just want a little bit more energy, Titan's the place for you because it doesn't matter what your goals are. Um, you know, they've got your back no matter what it is, so. Hello, my name is Lance Lockridge. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. Um, I've been with Titan now for about a year. I was very uh, sluggish, to say the least. I was felt very tired all the time. Um, didn't have really the energy I, I definitely do now. So um, I, I couldn't figure it out. I went two or three years. Like there were some days where I couldn't even get out of bed. Um, I was very depressed um, so but anyways I went and got my blood work done and I had high estrogen I was feeling very depressed very like bipolar ish very um, I literally felt almost like a female <laughs> like to say just not like myself you know I, I've, I'm like when I was younger in high school I was always a very upgoing person and I could feel myself declining as I was getting older so I was just kind of really I didn't know where it was coming from um, so my favorite are the Hercules potion the ECAs and the uh, Cupid's candy um, I love all three of those um, definitely the uh, Hercules potion I'm like really dead set like I've tried like I started lifting when I was 15 years old so like I've tried all these pump products and these nitric oxides, all of that, but there is nothing like a Hercules potion pump. Uh, just the uh, aminos and everything that's, that it's filled with, all the citrulline and arginine. Um, it's just your muscles, like when you're in the gym, literally just get so tight, it hurts. And I love, that's what I love. That's what I'm looking for in a, uh, a pump product, so. But the other one too, and I, you know, I think Blake would uh, back me up on this, is the um, Titan Complete. Uh, my mood is so much, I, it's a, you know, it's a, I, I look at it as my multivitamin. It's filled with a lot of Bs, especially the B12. So it gives me a lot of energy. It's almost like an energy shot. So if I don't have that, you know, my mood's a little bit more down than what it would be if I had it. So I feel like gold now. So 
Um, you know, I, I love it. I love everything that they have to offer. That I, I haven't used any products that I haven't liked. Um, you know, I haven't used the, the, some of the peptides that they offer because they're kind of newer. But um, I'm de I definitely want to because I believe in everything that they do and everything that they stand for. So, Service. top of the line, um, these I would. There's not a company that I've ever been associated with or even like looked into that you get feedback from straight from the owners of the company. I mean, these people genuinely care about you. Um, and it's hard to find that, especially in these bigger companies, especially the medical centers. People are looking to just just to get paid. And these people, like, it's not even about the money. It's about your health. It's about your happiness and about caring. It's about you. So I'm blessed. I'm, uh, I'm very blessed. And I'm happy and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. What's up guys, John here with my beautiful wife Sharice for Sharice's Healthy Lifestyle Soapbox. Me. So uh, every week Sharice is going to come at you guys live and uh, talk to you about her daily events or what's going on, right? right? Or what she's thinking about or what might be bothering her or something that might actually help you guys out in your life or you guys just might find very entertaining. Let's get into it and you know one of the subjects that's pretty close to Sharice's heart right now or that she's thinking about is probably what post COVID one year later. Yeah. It's, it's coming up on that, on the one year mark. So like almost next week or next week or maybe the week after somewhere in that time frame, these memories keep popping up on my Facebook, which is like, ah, um, but it's, 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 uh, you know, this is when I got diagnosed with COVID, you know, and this was like, this was my, the beginning of a very, very steep, downhill slide for me and my health um where it this i don't know this is like my come to jesus uh stage that i had to go through i guess maybe i don't know i mean obviously god wanted me to go through it for some reason so i went through it right so i got covid i got septic and i got pneumonia all in one and you know um i got so sick like i was so sick and you know i'm that i'm like that fighter chick right so you know it doesn't matter i'll get really really sick right it doesn't i'll be sick to death and i'll still get up come to work do what i gotta do still do it go home do what i gotta do boom boom bam boom boom bam take some antibiotics be fine right i'm taking them antibiotics i'm doing everything i need to do still feeling sick taking another steep down now i'm taking iv antibiotics still taking another steep down i'm like it all started with the fact that everybody told me it wasn't covid right they all told me it was pneumonia right. and i'm telling them i'm like listen i just don't feel right you know like the day that i woke up where i stood up out of the bed i'll never forget it i stood up out of the bed and i felt like i was going to fall backwards and that i couldn't breathe i'm like this is really weird and i was like had the blurred vision and everything i told john i'm like i can't see anything i'm like this is really weird i'm like i'm scared you know because i was scared um and you know i just went downstairs to go get some water right i walked downstairs walked back upstairs this is where it was at I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe going up and down the stairs. I got up the stairs and I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, oh my God, this is not good, right? So this is where my, like I said, you know, I had to have like a, I, I'm a workaholic, right? So I work, 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 work. And I like to work, you know, and I like to, be, the, the, the stuff that comes from benefits of working hard, right? And so, you know, I don't, didn't for a long time take care of myself. You know, I have endometriosis and all the other fun things that, you know, we can get into at another live. But, you know, I've never really taken care of myself. You know, I would go to bed at like two, three o'clock in the morning, get up the next day, six o'clock, like nothing. And then boom, boom, bam, just take some ECAs, take some vitamins and just move on with my day, right? Go mm -hmm. and do it again. Right. And then go and do it again. And then go and do it again. And eventually you get really, really tired. Try to take a day where you, have a little bit of time and you get some extra sleep, but you're really not taking care of yourself, right? So, you know, I, I'm tell, I, I tell everybody to take care of themselves and, you know, I was being hypocritical to some degree, you know, and just not taking care of me, right? Because I have to do all the rest of the stuff for everyone else. So anyways, get the, you know, whole COVID thing. And, um, you know, this was a fun experience for us because after this, 
and became like, this is the point where I got to the point where I had to be like, you know, I had to get on dexamethasone because like literally when I tell you that my head, even if, if my head was straight, it would still wiggle. So like anything I looked at, it would be like this. A little gyrating motion. Huh? And I couldn't, like, I would make me want to throw up. I'm like, I can't see. I can't do anything. I still had to work. So I'm like, all right, all right. So this was my, like I said, you know, I got really sick. Um, ended up in the hospital for a day. Thank God, because we have a medical center. So we had access to everything and all the kinds of medicines and everything you could possibly think of. And, um, you know, when you get that sick and, you know, you, you're at the point where you're on a nebulizer and you're taking all these medicines and, like you lay you lay flat and you can't breathe and you're gargling kind of on like your the water that's in your chest because that's what was happening um you know i would turn to john and i'm sure john remembers this and he would call me like i'm stupid or something but you know he's i'd be like hey if i don't wait i would mess with him but i'm like if I, I said hey if i don't wake up tomorrow because i might not wake up tomorrow because i can't breathe um, you make sure that you never remarry anyone or I'm going to haunt the shit out of you. Um, don't give away any of my stuff. Burn all of my clothes. Okay. Um, because I'm just, you know, a brat like that. So I'm like, you burn everything. Don't give anything away. I'm like, you know, this is how it's going down. Don't give my card to anyone either. And he's like, what are you talking about? But this is like, this, this was an eye opener for me that, you know, I don't know. It just... When you come down to it, and really, like, you really need your health to do the next thing, right? Because my mom always used to tell me that, and she still does. You know, she's like, if you don't have your health, you can't do anything. And we say it all the time. If you don't have your health, you can't do anything. I tell people on the phone when they're like, I want to look good. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm like, listen, if you don't have your health, you're not going to be, you're not going to do anything. You're just going to be, you'll either be 10 feet under or you'll be in a bed. And if you're in bed, you ain't looking cute. I mean, I was really trying my best to look cute. And it was not working out really good. Because I'm telling you, when you're that sick, you're not plucking your eyebrows or nothing. I'm like, John, how are you letting me get this mustache? You didn't even tell me. <laughs> really? That's not nice. Not true. <laughs> not true. But, you know, it's uh, it was an eye-opener because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, my God, you know. I feel like I haven't spent enough time with Peter and you know, what's, what's Peter going to do if I'm not around tomorrow and like, what's going to happen to the business and what's going to happen to John. And you start thinking all these, I mean, when I tell you that you start thinking some crazy off the wall, next level things, when you go through something like this, it does, it makes you humble. It humbles you. It forces you to be humble, you know, cause you don't, I'm hanging on to a string and I'm like, you know, I'm, I woke up on 4th of July. I won't forget that day. I woke up 4th of July. I woke up on 4th of July and I woke up crying. And the reason I woke up crying is because I could not move my legs, right? I tried to get up to use the bathroom. And when I got up, I couldn't stand up. That was bad. That was really scary, right? So I had to crawl to the bathroom. And then once I finally got in the bathroom, I still couldn't use my legs. And I'm like, okay, so this is, this is bad. This is not good. And it was painful. When I talk about it, somebody felt like it was crushing your bones in there. It was painful because I don't cry. Not normally, okay? Only if John makes me cry. Oh, but <laughs> never he never makes me cry. But, you know, I did. I was like crying my eyes out. So I get, you know, whenever a doc's on the phone, I'm like literally hyperventilating, crying over the phone. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I can't move my legs. And he's like, hey, elevate. The and all this time, right, guys, I was like, I am not going to the hospital, right? And the reason I'm not going to the hospital is because I'm going to go there with all the rest of these people that are sick and they are going to kill me. I'm going to go in there and they're going to kill me. Seriously. I'm going to go in there like this and I'm not going to come out, right? The second reason I want to go to the hospital was because all my hospital visits usually have been for my endo or something going on with my ovaries about to bust. And John's always been there with me. So I don't want to go by myself be in the hospital all by myself. That is not fun. And it's very scary. And it was even more scary when I did have to go to the hospital. And everybody's walking up in the room with their astronaut suits, all scared <laughs> of you, talking to you through this little plastic thing like, hey, so, yeah, well, what's going on with you? What do you mean? I'm in the hospital. I can't move my legs and I can't breathe. <laughs> what do you mean? What is going on with me? You're well, supposed what? to tell her. What the hell? Give me, yeah. some, give me some drugs and get me some IV <laughs> antibiotics and get me out of here, you know? But um, it was in that moment, like, you just, nothing else mattered. Like, you know, money didn't matter. You know, money's irrelevant if you can't, you know, if you're not around. You know, my, my cool purses and my cool car and my cool shoes and cool clothes, that's irrelevant if I'm not around. 
Like, everything is irrelevant, you know? And, like, then you start thinking about family and stuff. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? So, people take for granted, or maybe not even take for granted, but I they lose granted. sight of some of these really, really things that should take priority. Like, you know, like your family, right? The, the close friends, because not everybody's your friend out there that says they are. Um, but, you know, those close friends, those family members. So if you have kids, right, your loved ones, right, your, your partner, whoever it is. Um, you know, and then let's talk about your health. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big thing with the Healthy Lifestyle Show, mm -hmm. right? You know, because it does come down to your health. Without your health, you're not able to get out of bed. You're not going to do anything. So, you know, that's something that people don't, they put to the, the wayside until it directly affects their health. And they're like, oh, my God, please, Lord, let me just get out of this. I promise that I'll change how everything. I was. That's how I was. That's how everybody is. Yeah. You know, that's when it gets to that certain point. But the whole thing about it is, is you need to realize it now before you get to that certain point. And it's a lot easier said than done. It is easier said than done. Okay. I mean, listen, we're talking about, like, I mean, it got to a point where, like, I'm, I was losing, like, all my hair. You know, I, I, I was trying to recover from this thing. And I'm... I, Still, um, a year later, I'm still having post-COVID issues, right? So I'm still dealing with some of these post-COVID issues that I haven't been able to address yet because all the doctors out there have no idea. So there's no point in going to the doctor when they're going to tell you that we're all in this together. We're, we're all in this together. We are not in this together, okay? <laughs> out You're there. not in this with me. Okay, all of you yeah. out there, like these doctors that are like, okay, ma'am, we're all in this together. However, we just don't know about this COVID thing, and we don't know the effects of it yet. I'm like, well, could, do I get it like a, like a refund on my copay? And did you pay, to pay me for my like three hours of time in the lobby? You know, it just makes no sense. So it's like, <laughs> you know? Um, but... I had to ask John. John John reconnected me with God at that time because I'm like, I don't know what else to do. And, you know, John told me that the only thing you can do is pray. That's it. So. There's always a higher power uh, and whoever you believe in, you know. Uh, and if you're an atheist, uh, that's, you know, that's something that you have to deal with or you have some higher power maybe you're, you're reaching out to. But for us, right, Greek Orthodox, uh, you know, Catholic, this, it was, she was raised you know, God is, is your go-to, and it shouldn't be your go-to in just your time of need, but all the time. And I'm not here to get religious or anything like that, but there be, should be somebody that you're reaching out to and that you're praying to about these different things, and not just your health or not about making money, but every day. And, and you're, you're thanking God for what, or whoever your higher power is, you know, for what you have. And that should be your health. Right. That your is the first family, thing I say. Your priorities, yeah. right? Your top priorities, and really think about them. It, you know, if you're very successful, or maybe you're not, it doesn't matter. Really, write down on a piece of paper what really means the most to you, in, in order. One, two, three, right? And then after you write it down, look at it again and analyze it. Like, hey, listen, should this be my number one priority? I don't think so, though. But, you know, you go through this whole, like, COVID thing and then, or, like, what I went through, right? And my priorities, they shifted. You know, you know it's been a year now. Mm -hmm. So a year. And, and Teresa's still going through some of these neurological issues. Yeah. Uh, with me, you know, I was totally asymptomatic. I'm pretty good to go. And thank God a year later. Um, there are finding a lot of health issues going along with people post-COVID. And particularly in the heart now. Now they're, they're having all these different research that's coming about with heart issues and cardiovascular issues due to COVID. And I know they talked about the vaccine and stuff like that causing some of these, these problems too in cardiovascular, but you know, let's put that out, out the door and just talk about COVID cases. So, you know, with, with COVID out there and a lot of people did have COVID-19 and had been affected by COVID-19, mm -hmm. whether you were deathly ill, mm -hmm. right? Now, the people are terminal, like, listen, I lost a cousin a couple weeks ago, about a month ago now, yeah. due to COVID, you know, 55, no health problems, mm -hmm. dead. And he had everything, too. In the beginning, when we were first diagnosed with COVID, they knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Actually, they were recommending do not take dexamethasone it because anyway. it was a cortical steroid. Yep. And with cortical steroids, so you guys know, it breaks down immune function. It does. So with <laughs> viruses and stuff like that, your immune system has to fight them off. There's not some um, antibiotic they can give you that knocks out a bacterial infection. A virus is totally different the way it works. So they were t talking about against this. Luckily, we had one of our medical directors that was out in the field in rural areas yeah. that was practicing Thank some of these, these advanced protocols for COVID. And that's where dexamethasone, and that's what she was taking right away in the beginning. Thank God. 
And we had the, obviously the IV therapy that I had here and I had injectables with the, the zinc and the vitamin C and the glutathione. And I mean, I just, another big one, hydroxychloroquine now came up with research that listen, it's effective with COVID patients in the beginning. I took that too. It didn't do much for me. And that was against it, you know, totally against the grain there. So, I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, that we need to take into consideration here. But listen, if you are dealing with post-COVID symptoms, neurological there's symptoms. There's a lot of you guys out there. Symptoms, I know I'm not the only um, one. There are some other, you know, there's some medical providers out there that have been dealing with post-COVID long haulers, um, like yourself or like Sharice and stuff like that. So, you know, look for somebody that can really help you if you're dealing with these issues. There are some certain things and some certain treatments that could help relieve or alleviate the symptoms that you might be going through. So it's just a big thing, man. The number one thing I think that everybody should take away from your soapbox today, and correct me if I'm wrong, is health is number one importance. Yeah. And make sure that the priorities that you list and jot are the priorities that you want, one, two, and three. Really analyze this. And if you haven't been sick, right, or you haven't had COVID real bad, and you've never been in a really detrimental uh, health state. problem or state, you know, put yourself in that position. Think about, listen, if I had cancer today, Mm. and they gave me 14 days to live, what would I concentrate the most on? What would I want the most? Because it ain't going to be a car. Mm. It ain't going to be the jewelry. It ain't going to be the clothes. It ain't going to be the house you're living in. Because you can't take none of that with you. We were talking about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you have now. Because when, you, when you're when you getting ready to go... It don't come with you. It don't come with you. Nah. You know, and, and that's something you really got to think of. And who's going to be by your side? I had a conversation about this yesterday with somebody that was pretty smart. And he said, listen, you know, are these people going to be by your side when you tell them, listen, I'm going to die in 14 days. Are you going to spend all 14 days with me? Are you going to be here? And what's going to happen afterwards? And then it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty cool when we broke down. But that's the biggest thing I think I would take out of this. Yeah, be humble, guys, no matter how where you're at in life or what you're trying to do. And just always remember, because I, I did, I, I put work first over Absolutely. anything I did that's what I used to do um, I put it over me I put it over our family I put it over everything work was everything and listen work is still everything I'm not gonna lie because it's important to me yep. to take care of our patients and take care of our people and make sure everybody gets what they need and everybody's happy yep. I try my best to make everybody happy so when yep. somebody one person the one percent of the population gets upset I, I'm upset that they're upset right yep. but um, it's because I have the passion and the dedication to do what I do um, but after going through some of this stuff, you know, I, I realize, okay, you know, we do have our baby at home. I have this baby right here. And then, you know, I have the adopted baby, which is his dad. Uh, he, he's a baby too at home. He's one of my babies. So I got to take care of the babies, you know, and you, you got to start prioritizing what time is. I think that's a really good way to leave off here. Yeah. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.